Algebra 2, section 3-5 is our last section before we take our test. And it's systems with three variables. So basically, you're going to be dealing with, um, remember the section, I think it was 3-3 with elimination and substitution? So we're going to be dealing with the same thing except we're going to be dealing it multiple times in one problem. So your assignment in class is not going to be too terribly long. It's going to be kind of like you did in the last section where you have a few problems but they're equal to two because these are pretty lengthy. In fact, we're going straight into the problem and it's going to take about three boards before we actually finish the problem. So um, our answer, instead of just x, y, this is three-dimensional. So we're going to have an x, y, and z, three variables. So on a three-dimensional graph, it's kind of like when you see in a corner of a room, okay? So you have the line, I'm going to move this camera here. So here you have that line that goes straight down in the corner, and then it goes on the floor down, um, like out this way. So you have your x and y going out this way, right? And then right in the middle of that origin, something sticks straight up. That is three-dimensional, and that's what we're doing here. So we're not graphing the three-dimensional just yet, but we are going to be solving an x, y, and z. So the this is our one and only problem. So um, just be sure that if you're getting lost, to pause it, rewind it, you know, don't forget your vocabulary so that we make sure that we get this. And you'll have one to do on your own and you'll bring it in, okay? So the first one is, um, I'm giving you these steps, and each board has step one through four. These steps are what you're going to be using for your flipper. So make sure that, um, that you have the, the steps written down on your notes. You can pause and write that down. So step one, it wants us to use elimination to go from three variables to two. And what that means is I'm going to take two equations at a time, okay? So two equations at a time. And then I'm going to, just like we did um, in the other section using elimination, we're going to eliminate the same variable from each pair. So for example, I'm going to take the first two. 5x plus 3y plus 2z equals 2. And 2x plus y minus z equals 5. Now, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the one that has, um, I'm going to eliminate the one very, the, the, the easiest thing to manipulate. I couldn't do these, but I'm going to do y. And the reason why I'm doing y is because I don't have to do the other two equations. I mean this equation. I can just write this equation out. 5x plus 3y plus 2z equals 2. Okay? And then this one, I'm going to multiply everything. Okay, because this is 3, I need this 3 also. I'll multiply everything by 3. So 3 times 2 is 6x. 3 times y is plus 3y. And 3 times negative z is minus 3z. 3 times 5 is 15. And I'm going to subtract. Okay? 5 minus 6 gives me negative x or negative 1x. 3 plus 3, this cancels out. Okay, and then um, uh, positive 2x minus a negative, minus a negative is positive, so 2 plus 3, which would give me 5z, and 2 minus 15 is negative 13. Alright, so here I've gotten rid of y. So in my next one, okay, when I work with the next two, or the bottom two here, and here I can use any combination as long as I get rid of um, the equation. I'm going to do 2x plus y minus z equals 5. Okay, I'm going to take these two right here. So the first one I took these two, and now the second one I'm going to take these two. And x plus 4y plus 2z equals 16. Now, on this one, I have to get rid of the same variables I got rid of here. Okay, the same variable. Um, 2x plus, so I have to get rid of y. Now, just like this one, because this has no number in front of it, I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 4. Okay? I'm going to times it by 4. So I end up with 8x plus 4y minus 4z equals 20. Okay? And then the next one, because this is already 4y, I don't need to change anything. I just need to bring it over. X. Sometimes you have to change both, just like 
regular elimination. Sometimes you need to change both, sometimes you don't have to. In this case, we don't have to. You won't be so lucky on all of them. So x plus 4y plus 2z equals 16. Okay, bring it. Now I'm going to subtract. All right? So 8 minus x or minus 1x would give me 7x. 4 minus 4, this cancels out. And then I have negative 4 minus 2, which gives me negative 6z. And 20 minus 16 is 4. All right? So my two equations, okay, are now this. So what I did here is I made, I eliminated one of the variables, okay? Ultimately, what we're going to be doing is we're going to eliminate the variables because we can only solve if there's a, a maximum of how many variables in an equation, just one. So we have three, but now we've narrowed down to only two variables left. And they have to be the same variables, but we have two variables left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two variables and I'm going to transfer it onto my step three, I mean step two. And step two is asking me to use those two variables. Oops. Step two is asking me to use those two variables and then eliminate another. Now step two is what you've seen before. It's, it, it's um, elimination with two variables. So my equation is negative x plus 5z minus 13. And then 7x minus 6z equals 4. Oh, this equals minus negative 13. Yes, I'm just checking my work. All right, so we have negative x plus 5z equals negative 13. 7x minus 6z equals 4. Now from here, we're going to do um, elimination to get rid of yet another variable. Okay, um, we can go ahead and do it here um, because we can get rid of the, the x's here. So let's go ahead and um, multiply this whole thing because I want it to equal 7. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by negative 7. Okay, multiply it by a negative 7. Okay, this will get me... Negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7x. That's what I want. Negative 7 times negative 5 is negative 35z. And negative 7 times negative 13, that's where Miss P needs her calculator. Don't judge me. 7 times is 91. Let's check that again. Yeah. So... Negative, negative, make a positive, so equals positive 91. My next step here, because this is already 7, I just need to bring it this way. So I end up with 7x minus 6x equals 4. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract. Make sure this is going to be here. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and subtract. So this cancels out with this, and I end up with negative 35 minus a negative. So that's a positive, so negative 35 plus 6, which gives me negative 20, oh, this is not x, sorry, this is z. Ah. Um, negative 29z, and 91 minus 4 is 87. 87? Correct. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 29. This cancels out and I end up with one of my answers finally is z equals negative 3. And that's my first answer. Okay? So z equals negative 3. Now, from there, it's just a series of substitution that we're going to plug in, and then we're going to solve for all the other variables. So now we're not doing elimination or substitution anymore. We're, I mean, elimination anymore. We're just substituting the variables and solving. So on this step, I'm going to, I have z, right? I can now plug z in. But the problem that you need to avoid is don't plug this in, into our original equation, because our original equation still has how many variables? Three. And so if I fill one in, I'm still missing two more, and I need to be only missing one. 
So I'm going to take what I know Z here and I'm going to plug it in because it says using step two. So my problems from step two I can use. So let's, this one for example, negative X plus 5Z. And remember, just like elimination, I can use either one. 5Z equals negative 13. And now I know what Z is and I'm going to plug it in. Okay, so because Z equals 3, negative X plus 5 times negative 3 equals negative 13. I end up with negative X minus 15 equals negative 13. I'm going to add 15 to both sides. I end up with negative X equals negative 13 plus 15 gives me 2. And the X cannot be negative, so I have to divide or multiply both sides by negative 1. This cancels out, and I get X equals negative 2. That's my second answer. All right? So now we have 2. Now that we have 2, our last step is um, simple because all we need to do is take our two letters that we already have and plug it into one of our original equations, any, any of the original equations. So look back and look at those original equations, and let's figure out which one is the easiest. I'm thinking maybe it's the second one because it has the least amount of coefficients. So let's review. We know that our z equals negative 3, and we know that our x equals negative 2. And the equation we're going to choose is 2x plus y minus z equals 5. All right? So from here, we just plug in. Once we plug in, then we solve for our final equation, and this problem is finally done. So 2 times x, which is negative 2, plus y, we don't know what y is, okay, um, minus a negative 3. Now, just because there's negative, this will be a positive. Please remember that. And then equals 5. So let's check one more time. We have a maximum of how many variables here? Just one, so that means we can solve for our final one. So we have 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, okay, plus y. Negative and a negative is plus 3 equals 5. Okay? And because these are on the same side of the uh, equal side, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to simple, uh, sorry, I'm going to combine like terms. Okay, I'm not going to do the opposite because they're on the same side. So negative 4 plus 3 will give me negative 1 plus y equals 5. Now I want to bring this over, I'm going to do the opposite. So negative 1, I'm going to add 1 to both sides and I end up with y equals 6. And this is my last one. My final answer is I'm going to be written like it is a... Uh, point, um, the, it's going to be all the points into one, okay? So my final answer, I'm not going to use purple, okay? So here, oh, I have red again, <laughs> sorry guys. So here, I know my x is negative, it's going to be x, y, z, okay? So here, x is negative 2, y is 6, and z is negative 3. And that's my answer. Um, negative 2, 6, and negative 3. And I know it took a lot. We did substitute, we did elimination twice, substitution twice to get it. So you're not going to have a lot of homework, but each problem is going to be long. Um, so prepare. So go ahead and try page 149, number 2 page 149 number 2 and just bring it to class. If you don't fully understand it, it's okay. Just try it and see how much you can get from it. And I'll see you in class.